know, I remember when I was a teenager, I, they did, uh, I think it was on the Grammys, <clears throat> Boss Skaggs narrated the San Francisco scene and they did a spot on it about the music and the culture from the 60s and how it's evolved and a convergence of multiculture and the emergence of the gay community, LGBTQ community. It wasn't even called that then. So like any good lesbian back then, I played softball and um, a friend on the team said, oh, the fire department's hiring women. They're recruiting women. Let's go to this meeting at the women's building. You know, I took the test in 88 and 89, I got hired. And I always say this, but it was like a perfect career because it was like social work. You know, I love that connecting and helping people aspect and physical. So I was like a social worker with an ax basically. and. Um, I just thought, this is like, I, this is it. I hit the jackpot. Part of my story is I grew up across the street from a fire station. And as a young girl, I used to love going in there and would go in there whenever my parents voted. They had the old fashioned voting machines. And, um, and I was in awe of the place, but I never saw anybody that looked anything like me. Um, it was all men, um, it was all white men. And, um, and so I never knew that I could do that. This was in the 70s. And um, I worked in um, several different things. And I was at the Pride Parade in 1991. And the chief of the department, she, um, I did give her a courtesy card to come in. I remember it to this day, June 30th. Um, the uh, saying then was hand in hand together. And I was with a friend of mine and a firefighter named Anita Pratley came up to me. And I had, we had a mutual friend, but we didn't meet. And um, she came by the table. And I, as soon as I looked at her, I saw a tie to my friend. I could see she was super athletic. Um, and uh, she knew my friend. And she said, hey, do you want to be a firefighter? Here's an interest card. Can you carry heavy things? You know, come on, join us. There's something about her that could roll with the punches and also give a few punches. And I thought she'd be great. Um, and I just knew it, you know. So I did give her the courtesy card and it's probably my greatest achievement. And it was the first time I actually saw myself in someone else that was doing this job. I was like, oh, wow, yeah, I love a good crisis. And I'm, I'm good in crises. And I'm good at thinking on my feet and I'm, you know, super fit and physical, and maybe I could do this, awesome. But just in terms of pride in general, um, being able to go to pride and be who we are and be who I am, it's like, it's a sense of dignity, a sense of equality, a sense of um, inclusion. And so every time I ever marched in pride with the fire department, I was always incredibly proud incredibly proud to represent the community and to be, you know, doing service for the community because that's what I love doing is doing service. Coming to San Francisco for me was really key because um, I love the city. The city is so vibrant and diversity is really, it's one of its treasures. And so being part of a department that represents diversity is huge and it's, it's so important to me. Um, that we welcome everyone and not just face value, not just say we, we like diversity, but truly to integrate, to have diversity, have representation, not just on the firefighter level, but all levels in this department, all ranks, up and down the chain of command. It's, it's huge. And um, stepping in as a woman of color, as a part of the, the LGBTQ community, um, means more than just myself, right? I represent more than just myself. But there are other, as a leader, other people in this department, other people in the community that are looking at me and seeing that there's a space for them. And so really, that's really what we're creating here is space for everyone. Yeah, what do you guys want to know? Well, when I did first join the military, I, it was still under Don't Ask, Don't Tell. So joining, you know, I had to be super 
cautious about what I was doing. Um, I was still figuring out who I was. You know, I joined at 19. Uh, so at the time I knew I was part of this community, I just wasn't accepting it yet. Uh, my first duty station was at Naval Hospital Guam and that's where I actually got to explore who I was. And being under the umbrella of Don't Ask, Don't Tell and having a very good friend of mine actually separated uh, within my second year of being active duty because he was gay. You know, it was very real. You know, you had to make sure that you were following the rules, you were doing everything that you needed to do. And I was fortunate enough to be there, active duty, when Don't Ask, Don't Tell was repealed. And it, it's, it, you, you find people who were making such a big deal about it, that it was gonna affect the readiness. The next day, everybody went to work like nothing happened. We were accepted, no one made a big deal about it. You know, we were able to be who we were able to be. And work performance was even better because you no longer had to hide something and worry about hiding. You could just go to work and do your job properly and excel. The transition from that world into this one is basically the exact same, you know. It's, I was able to just jump in and just, you know, not even test the waters, you know. I, uh, I grew up with uh, firefighters around, my uncle, my cousin, uh, for a volunteer department in Canada. Um, here it's it's quite different bigger department a lot of different people um you know just working with san francisco i really enjoy having all the different personalities backgrounds experiences i'm a probie right now and you know i'm i'm a year into my probation i'm almost finished uh and you know the houses that i've been at i've felt like everybody has just brought me in and shown me what they know uh and regardless of my sexuality my gender my race, I mean, I was 28 when I decided to change my whole career and, you know, go in a different direction. You know, I'm 35 now, just starting out in a whole different field. San Francisco has a large population of LGBTQ community in general, and our department is reflective of that. The one thing I love about San Francisco Fire Department is that we do look like the community that we serve, and we're making every stride to reflect that. So even in our outreach efforts, our recruitment efforts, we're trying to make sure that every single person, including the LGBTQ community, has an opportunity to become a member of our department. So as a company officer, it's important to make sure that I create an environment that's safe and welcoming for my crew. That includes every single member that's on my apparatus, because if they feel like they're a part of the team, I honestly feel that we can do a better job when we are responding to the public. You know, my dad was a football coach and, and he taught me to persevere, to focus and to be committed. And, and that's what I'm, I'm showing that I'm doing that. And I'm very proud to say that, you know, I get to start my career off of probation as a firefighter for the San Francisco Fire Department. And uh, I'm proud to be who I am, I'm proud to be all the colors that I am, that I represent, I'm proud to be you know, a lesbian woman in this department and to feel very comfortable with who I am and, and very secure and excited to come to work. You know, one thing my mom always ingrained in, in us was that anything we set our heart to and anything that we wanted to do, the only thing stopping us was us. You know, I was, it was my dream to be a Sam's School Fire Department you know, member and I'm here. Being chained because of who I was and now being able to be out and proud of who I am, it's, I feel it should mean something. It's important as a San Francisco firefighter that we understand the community that we serve. It's important that our department is made up of different genders, different ethnicities, different sexual orientations, because the community that we serve needs to reflect the individuals that are on our apparatus. You know, I've seen I've seen the evolution of this department. I've seen it change through the years. Um, we're in a better place than we were uh, many years ago. I think we continue to evolve. Um, I'm really hopeful for this next generation of leaders who do um, smart, determined, lead with heart, and I think um, I'm hopeful for our future for this department going forward. We're your department. We're, we're here for you. We're you. And, that, and I really believe that San Francisco really embodies that. 
I'll tell you, it was the, it was the greatest, greatest decision I ever made. It's, I, I kept thinking, my gosh, if I didn't play softball, I wonder if I would have heard about it. But, um, it's funny how you plan in life, you go to college, if you have that opportunity or you, you plan your next steps, but the most profound decisions in life, how you meet people are random. And I, I was meant to be, I think. And it was such a great fit, you know, being that social worker with the ax, you know, that's it. So I see San Francisco and San Francisco leadership and government as a beacon um, for the entire country because we are so upfront about what we believe in. We're really upfront about inclusivity. And I know that others look at us, many look to us. We've had other departments um, contact us in terms of how do you, how do, you do this? How do you um, create a diverse, equitable and inclusive workforce? And so, um, but I would be lying if I said that, that we don't have any problems in California or in, in San Francisco or in, in the department. We, um, are there outliers? Sure. And are we doing our best, again, to address those things with implicit bias training, with um, you know, changing the culture our department has made? Huge, huge leaps, as has the city. And I really feel like San Francisco is part of the solution to moving forward in a better way. Um, People are individuals. There's so many different types of people in this world, and um, celebrating our differences is what Pride is all about. <laughs>